Geez, I, the, boy, them come trails are moving fast. I just tried to get the moon with, with like a waffle pattern of clouds in front of it. And let me see if I can catch it over here. Nope. Well, the video I just uploaded showed the start of the chemtrails. I showed you the moon. Now the moon's just totally engulfed and obscured with the chemical contrails. Um, so I guess I'll just focus on a <laughs> car. Um, I just watched the news with my mom and dad. Well, I didn't watch it because I can't stand it. It really upsets me. But they had their little part about them landing on Mars. And I was in the kitchen and my dad, I heard him yelling, I came and looked and he told me they're landing, they landed on Mars. And nothing makes my blood boil worse than this type of nonsense. Because I, I say, Dad, look at the screen. That's an animation. Okay, so they got their little an animation up in the, the center of the screen and then down in the lower left, they got a picture or some type of video showing of the real thing landing. And what's so funny is the animation looks far better than what they're saying is real, you know. And he, people like my dad, I showed him earlier on my Nikon some footage I had of, I, of Mars, because that's what they were saying on the news, that they sent a contraption uh, piece of metal uh, to Mars, to the surface of Mars. And I showed him the, the wandering star Mars, and I said, look, you see that light, you see that, that fluctuation of what looks like currents of electricity? And I'm not saying they're electricity, okay? I'm just saying they look like it. And I'm trying to show him that it's not a solid object, but it doesn't matter what I show him in real time, you know, what's real, as opposed to the, these people's animations and, and malarkey that they used to defraud the taxpayer. That's what's going on. They don't use the money for the stuff they say they're doing. They, they just show you artist renderings, animations, uh, augmented virtual reality, and all manner of just computer-generated stuff. And people buy it hook, line, and sinker. They love it. You can't tell them anything. You can't show them Mars under high X zoom with a Nikon. doesn't look anything. If you Google what, uh, Mars and they'll show you a picture of a big-ass ball that's a rock with dirt, you know, with a surface. But if you zoom in on it, I mean, it's right there. They say it's trillions and trillions, or millions of miles away. In this case, millions. It's supposed to be in our solar system. Millions upon millions of miles away, some 30, 40 million miles away, and I can zoom in on it just like I could something a quarter mile away, you know, just up in the sky. And I can see it. It looks like it's about a half inch on the screen. And, or a little smaller, and you can see that this thing is a multicolored, uh, semi-transparent orb of light, of uh, primarily red, but other flashes of blue and green, and it's you can obviously see, obviously see, it's not a solid object. It is what the Bible says, a light, and the Bible says these lights are for seasons, times, years, and signs for the Earth, not to com comprise other galaxies or quadrants of an infinite and expanding universe. Nowhere in Scripture does it say stars are meant to comprise other galaxies or be suns for other planets. This is the most absurd and idiotic thing I've ever heard and seen in my life. But... I have to tolerate it because I believed it seven years ago before I came across the flat earth, which I didn't like at first. I didn't. Uh, you know, I never looked at the video, but the, the heading, the description, I was into UFOs and I'd always see one or two of them videos in my lineup suggestion, you know. But when I did come come across it, the first video my IQ clicked right away with the things they were saying about water, 
especially water and then gravity. And I had to verify it on Google and this and that, that it, yes, it is a theory. It's not a fact. I thought gravity was real. Those were the, the pretenses that I went by that I thought were real. I didn't know that was still a, a freaking theory. And I found out they never have directly detected this force or occurrence itself. It's always got to show you what they they say it's doing. Then they measure that, you know, or a result. But when it comes to gravity itself, like how it would, you know, be pulling that car down upon the ground emanating from the center of the Earth, or now their new version, the curvature of space-time, they can never tell you how that it's doing it. They can only show you a result or some action of something falling, measuring how fast it falls, and then that's your gravity. Okay, you can't just have someone come in the room with a black eye and then start, you know, measuring how the punch or if it came from someone throwing something in his face or he got elbowed or punched or hit with a blunt object. Come on, you cannot say how that black eye occurred unless you can prove with direct evidence, not indirect evidence. Everything that supports gravity is indirect and circumstantial. <laughs> so, I mean, come on, man. Electricity and magnetism are real forces that can be directly detected themselves. We don't have to plug a TV in and show you the TV in operation to prove electricity. We can we can directly detect by current and lightning bolt in the sky, current in your home, that, that electricity exists and we can not we can see it too. Magnetism by magnetic field. <laughs> and these two forces or occurrences are subordinate. To gravity that means they're lesser like if all three in the were in the room g gravity would be the admiral or the general or, or the president electricity and magnetism would be captains okay so that's illogical there how can this force or occurrence of gravity do everything they say if they cannot identify detect or isolate gravity itself how does it propagate through the air like if it's the curvature of space-time created by uh, the alleged mass of the earth out there in outer space curving its surrounding space-time by its mass well how does it propagate how does the cur are we breathing in curvature of space-time i mean we can detect the air that has presence and substance but there's no presence and substance of any fabric of space-time being curved. How could something you can't feel by waving your hand, you can feel the air and the resistance, but how could something that has no presence and substance of itself make that car stick to the outside surface of a big giant and spinning ball? That's what I would like someone to explain to me, and thus far, it has never occurred, okay? Not, there's no Principia by Newton or Relativity by Einstein that explains that. They just make these assertions and you believe it with no explanation as to how that is achieved. And it's illogical. If we did live on the outside surface of a giant ball... We would definitely, 100% empirically, need a force to keep us, uh, to keep the ability to just walk around on its outside surface and walk down to the south uh, pole and, and remain on it without falling off. There would have to be a force or occurrence that negated that. Okay, it, it would definitely have to exist. I agree 1 million percent. Okay. Now, these people just don't understand that. They don't understand how important a force like that, that would be a godlike force. Okay, and it would have to do it by some means of presence and substance of itself through propagation. Okay, a bird can't fly from this car. 
or let me take away fly. A bird cannot get from this car to that van over there unless it propagates there. If I wanted to propagate to that van, I'd have to walk or run, okay? The bird would have to fly. The, so propagation is the act of travel, traveling to another object to interact, engage, or engulf it to do for it to do what you want it to do. And gravity um, exhibits no direct evidence of its existence, of it itself. All they got is they can just show you what they say it's doing. Then they measure that. And that's illogical. But anyway, I forgot what my main topic was. And it wasn't about the Mars. And what it is, is it's the propaganda that we all suffer. And I told my dad, I said, Dad, are you going to, you know I love you, right? And you know I'm in the room with you, right? Are you going to disregard everything I've, I've said and and tried to show you for some guy a thousand miles away on the TV that you don't know who does not love you? Are you going to believe him? He. This is a, an example of artificial intelligence because this news anchor, all he cares about his whole day is situated around him getting to the uh, the office on time, getting in his makeup chair, sitting there for a couple hours, getting his uh, uh, face put on. Then he puts on his three or four thousand dollar suit and has no preparation whatsoever. All he does is wait for that green or red light to turn on and that teleprompter to start telling him what to say. Okay, that's your news. It's not like in the old days when a news reporter would hit the street, the blacktop, and go get himself a story. No, these guys are all fed what they're going to tell us beforehand. All right? And they don't care about you. Why people think that these people go out of their way, that they would find it necessary to tell you what's going on, to help you, to keep you informed? No. This is all an agenda. The news is just one big fat brotherhood of agenda that's propped up by propaganda. Okay, there's millions and billions of dollars involved in what they tell you. They got to appease you. They got to keep you in your place. Okay, you can't be a people who want the truth or whatever you're told to be verified. You get your verification through these liars in thousand dollar suits just sitting behind their desk. You don't know them. They don't know you. They don't love you. But you'll disregard love and, and a nearness of kin trying to tell you something and you will just disregard it. And it's disgusting. They've won. There's no, the majority of people, as the Bible says, will spend an eternity in everlasting shame. Now, I'm not going to say hell or this or that. I'm just going to say everlasting shame. And the Bible says the road to a righteous existence for all eternity is very, very, very narrow. Meaning not wide, you know. But the road to perdition and everlasting shame is miles and miles wide. It's a very wide road. And most people are on it because they what they worship is money and what they can get. And they worship themselves. Okay, and that's all they care about. They don't care about truth. All they care about is their little 100 foot circle. And that's it. They don't care. You could tell them the truth all day and it's not going to register because they don't care. You know, and you can sit here and look at stuff like this gate and that bug zapper and that little, what is that, little robin type bird on the wind chimes. And you know these things had to be made. Absolutely. And whoever made them had to have a thought. They had to have the ability to think. Okay, so they dreamed this bug zapper up and made a, a plan, then a process, 
and then a repeated execution to make more than one. And if you're going to tell me, I know for a fact that my brain, me, myself, I'm a trillion times more advanced than that bug zapper. Okay, but you're going to tell me that I came from nowhere, made by no one and nothing over large periods of time? When this this junk bug zapper, very simple in its mechanics, had to be made and could never have come from nowhere over any amount of time. Okay, what's what would be more easier for nothing from nowhere to make? Uh, uh, an, an organism that is self-replicating and reproduction that can think or something inanimate? It would be easier to make something inanimate. There's nothing to this thing. Okay? Something alive is a very, very, very complex organism. All right? And these guys, these men who call themselves geniuses in white lab coats, to this day, have never, ever even produced one cell from nothing. Can you understand that? Some of them buy these little kits that already have the necessary uh, elements and compounds in them. And they still can't do it. We're under a lot of propaganda with this virus and now global warming is being ramped up. I just can't believe how easy it was for these people to achieve what they are they have been achieving over us. And my dad, you know, he's 84 and he should be wise, very wise and full of wisdom more than me. He should he should have he should possess more than I do. And how is it that I got to tell him? Look, examine this closely. It says artist rendering or animation underneath. Okay, or when I tried to Google satellites and show them a hundred cartoon pictures of these things. Where are they? Why can't I zoom, zoom in on the moon and I can't see a damn one? Any black spot or speck or anything. Why can't I see any of them? Why is it when I go ten miles down the road to a place called Lindenville... Every phone, I've had three or four different services and not one of them has ever been able to operate in this town. The only thing that operates is the landline. They don't require a signal. Okay, you can stand in this town all day waiting for a satellite to pop up over, you know, your head and catch a signal. You won't. I believe it was even in the paper. They were they were talking about putting a cell phone tower up in this town in that town. And that's what they would need. As soon as you step out of the repeater tower range, you're out of luck. You're straight out of luck. There ain't no satellites. How stupid. So you think if you get this car, if you could somehow get it up to the Carmen line that you know, 10 inches past the carbon, Carmen line, that that car would start floating? Really? We are a dumbed-down people, and this is the age of the dumbed-down man, and it's pathetic.